Hi, welcome everybody to CTC's uh, webcast. Uh, my name is Scott Mizek. Uh, today's webinar will be on basically the introduction to the mark point. Uh, so we're going to be looking at how you'll use a mark point when it comes to building an assembly for a corridor. Um, with that, we'll go ahead and jump right in. Um, oh. Just so you know, uh, this is being recorded. I did remember to hit record this time. So when this is done, um, we'll have our marketing guys polish it up a little bit, and it will go up on our YouTube page. So now we'll get started. Um, features that we're going to cover. Um, why use a mark point and a link to mark point? Some of the common uses, common use for mark points. How to set it up, and then some of the limitations behind the mark point and link to mark point. So. Did a couple screen caps, link to mark point, link to mark point two, and then the mark point. Um, we got a decent sized group here. Um, I have looked through this and I have not been able to find any difference between link to mark point and link to mark point two, besides the two at the end of the second one. Uh, if anyone does know the difference between those two that I've just totally missed, I'd be willing to listen and uh, I'll give you a shout out for it. Um, but um, with our code set style that we use by default, um, a mark point shows up as a triangle for us, and then this is what a link to mark point looks like um, in our code set styles. Obviously, based off of your code set styles, you can make these things look different. So, why? Why do we want to use mark points and link to mark points? Um, basically, to have a varying width or slope in the middle of an assembly is the main reason why. So in my little picture here, I have a southbound lane and a northbound lane. Well, I want my center line to hold for southbound and I want my center line to hold for, for my northbound. But I need to have the two back of curbs to connect. Well, I can't build an assembly that will start at this top back of curb and then go at five feet at a 2% to this back of curve because with the center lines um, being independent of each other, those top back of curves are also going to be independent of each other. So what we're going to need to do is put that mark point in. So some of the common uses, like I just said, medians right there. Um, another one, front slopes of ditches. Um, I want to build a ditch and I want the back slope to be at right away line and then build the back slope, build the bottom, and then have the, the front slope maybe tie right into top back of curb. Um, so my top back of curb is going to be dependent on the center line of the road. My back ditch is going to back slope a ditch is going to be dependent on the right away. And then everything builds backwards. And then working backwards from the right away. Um, Prime example of that is in an urban setting. I build my road, I build my curb, but then I want to target my um, right-of-way line both horizontally and vertically so that I'm tying into an existing building face or something that's already there that it'd be really expensive to maybe raise or lower a building. And then work backwards. So maybe I work backwards and I put in a sidewalk from there, and now I want to put in a mark point from the sidewalk the front edge of the sidewalk to the top back of curb to, to basically fill in the blanks. So th those are three big reasons why you'd want to use mark point. And then the fourth one is basically to build everything within one corridor. I have seen clients build a corridor just for southbound and then another corridor just for northbound and then they do a show boundary between the two, the daylight or to fill in the blanks where the two corridors don't match. Using an, uh, a mark point and then the link to mark point, I'm able to build both of these at the exact same time in the same corridor using one region, one assembly. Assembly setup. I need a mark point and I need a link to mark point. Simple enough on there. The key on there is that in the, the construction, I went into the construction of one of my assemblies, that mark point has to be built 
before the link to mark point. If I were to have built the link to mark point and then dropped in the mark point after it, it will not work. So you have to make sure that the link to the, the mark point is built first. The other key is that the name must match. So when you build, when you drop in the subassembly mark point, it's going to give it a, a name. Point name, I called it MP02 for mark point two. Well, that name has to match the same name for the link to mark point. So they both have to be MP02. By default, it comes in as none. Um, and I need to name it. What I have the ability to do with assemblies is actually have multiple mark points, multiple link to mark points. So I could actually have in one assembly mark point one, mark point two, mark point three. I just have to make sure that they all line up with what I want it to be. Um, next, omit link. Typically, your corridors, your two roads, I can't call them corridors, your two assemblies for the roads, you need to get a link out there to find center line. What you need to do is so you, that doesn't build is you actually need to go into that link and say omit link and you need to change it to yes. So mark point, link to mark point, the third par portion of that is um, a link that's usually omitted. I'll, I'll have a link that might target out all the way out to right away line. I'll omit that and then build backwards. I'll have a link that targets the other center line of the road and then build back to the median or maybe um, back edge of ditch and then build back. So the, the three things are there is mark point, link to mark point, and then typically a width and slope link that will target a certain line and then build backwards. Limitations with the our assembly offsets. Um, mark point and link to mark point work when the link remains perpendicular to the original alignment. If one target if one targets the assembly offset to a secondary alignment and a profile, and this secondary alignment does not remain parallel to the pr primary alignment, then the corridor may not build properly. So what will happen is it will go out and target that alignment and profile if you do an assembly offset. And if it doesn't remain parallel, it will end up creating bow ties like that right there. And so in this example, I actually used the assembly offset, targeted another alignment, another profile, and on the left side, it came out and targeted, found that line, but then everything built perpendicular to that assembly. So that second road built perpendicular to that uh, uh, alignment and then when it came back and targeted you got a lot of crisscrossing right in here and as we know bow ties in civil 3d in corridors are not a good thing because it's a sign that the corridor just didn't build right so limitations are using assembly offsets if the assembly offset is parallel um, you shouldn't have any problems um, if it's got minor kinks in it like this one in, right in here yeah it came off and then built, um, you're going to get some deviations. If it's only tapering out from a 5-foot median to a 10-foot median and then coming back, and it's gradual, it'll look halfway decent, but um, it still, um, may, you may get some bow ties. So that is the limitation with uh, um, mark points is the assembly offsets. Um, that concludes my PowerPoint. So let's go ahead and jump right into the software. And what I have is I have actually built four assemblies in here, all using mark points and link to mark point. So I'm going to look at my first, first one right in here, and it's a ditch. I have my road, my curb, my curb. And then what I did was I added a link to mark point, properties, Oops, let's get this over on the other screen on here. And all it is is go 35 feet at a minus 5%. And then I 
have a back slope. Oops, let's just pick the one. Uh, three feet at minus 50%, so uh, a two to one. And then I have the bottom of my slope. Two foot, two percent, and then I have a link point. I also have a mark point here. This mark point is labeled MP01, and this link to mark point is labeled MP01. So what it's going to do is it's going to build from that link, from that point, to that point. The key on here is, again, if I look at this in my assembly properties, construction, the mark point is built before the linked mark point. So if I say OK, I'll take a look at my median one because I've already built it with the median. I did the exact same thing, a little more complicated. I got a, a link width and slope, and I actually called this one uh, two northbound. That's my subassembly name for it. And then from there, I built my road curbs, and then still the mark point there, and then the link mark to mark point built on my top back of curb. So if I jump into my corridor, it builds to fill in the blank. Well, right now it's just a 35 foot offset and then just building backwards, so there isn't much of a change to it. So what I did was I actually targeted an offset line. I kept it 35 feet, but it's got a varying uh, profile to it. So if I look at my corridor properties, let's slide these over, and I look to my targeting, I actually, my link width and slope has a two northbound name. I renamed it so it's easier to find, and I targeted a feature line called northbound, and then both horizontally and vertically. So what that did, rebuild my corridor just for fun, is if I look at this corridor in section editor, here is my median, and as I move, you can see that the slopes of my, my lanes stay the same, but my slope between my top back of curbs is changing. Now, the one bad thing on here is I have a line right in here that goes top back of curb to top, top back of curb. That is my link to mark point. But I also have this other line right here that is going from top back of curb all the way up to center line. And that's my omit link uh, assembly. So if I quickly jump to my median one here and go to subassembly properties, parameters, here's my omit link code. If I say yes, say OK, say OK. Corridors rebuild. Give it some time. Now that link disappears. So it's like if any one of you use Subassembly Composer, it's like an apparent point or an apparent link. It doesn't build in your subassembly. So by saying omit link, now my corridor will build lane, curb, 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 lane, lane, curb, and then just one link, top back of curb, top back of curb. That link that went from top back of curb to center line has been omitted. Again, I had other reasons in here. So the other one was right away. I targeted from top back of curb another link that would actually come out and target the right-of-way line, and then I could work backwards. 
maybe I put in sidewalk and then there's green space between the sidewalk and um, the top back of curb. One, I don't want to call it a downfall, the out of the box link to mark point always builds looking to the right. So it always thinks that you're building to the right. So there is no way to come in and change it to say, hey, no, I want you to go left on this. It just doesn't do it. So you will get in your assembly views, you are going to get things that look similar to this. You're going to have the link to mark point always pointing right. So I'll quickly jump into my corridor property here and I will change my assembly to mark point four, which then gives me an assembly offset. I'll say northbound and then I will use my proposed surface and I'll say okay. I'll rebuild again and while that's rebuilding, um, oh that went quick, so I'll just jump back in. Um, now if I look at this in plan view, those are the bow ties. It, builds a little bit differently. And then if I look at it in here, again, there is my link from back of curb to back of curb, but because I used an assembly offset, I don't have that link that went from top back of curb to center line, so there was nothing to omit there. So in a nutshell, that is mark point, link to mark point, um, how to build them, the benefits to them and other things like that. So remember, mark point has to be built first in the construction of the assembly. They both have to share the same name. If you only have one mark point and one link to mark point, calling them none is sufficient because they share the same name, none. Um, typically, you're going to have a link that will send you outwards because you are always going to build back towards the middle of your assembly and that mark that link will usually be omitted so it doesn't build in your corridor and if you use assembly offsets you have to make sure that they remain parallel or you could run into issues like this so I do have a couple questions in here um, why use the omit link at all in the northbound southbound example why link the curb to the opposite road center line? Well, basically, the, I, I wanted my, my center lines for northbound and southbound to be independent of each other. So I needed to go from top back of curb of the southbound to then the center line of the northbound. And then that link was targeted to a feature line or an alignment in, in a profile. So I would have independent control between uh, the two. And, and by doing so, I have a link that gets me there, so now I have to say omit link just, just so it doesn't build. Um, hopefully that answered. And then, do mark points allow you to target points between two corridors? No. The mark points have to remain within the same corridor, um, basically the same region. And so I may have a corridor and I might have five baselines, um, those targetings have to stay within that same baseline. So um, that is one of the other limitations is that, yes, the um, targetings have to be within that same assembly. So if I zoom out right in here, I could not put a mark point in this median sub-assembly uh, and then have it target something in the right-of-way one. They have to remain within the, that same assembly.